الله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين صلاة والسلام عليك يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا شفيع المسلمين Respected audience Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu The Quran states وَالَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَذِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَكَفَى بِالْذَاهِ شَهِيدًا The translation roughly reads as follows that it is he Allah who sent his apostle Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with religion of truth. The term religion, really speaking, should be dis uh, translated as a perfect political, political, sociological, economic, cosmological order. And that he, Allah, who sent his apostle with all that which I mentioned and more, and fortified him with the religion of truth. Meaning, when you say in the dina in the Allah in Islam, that the only system acceptable to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Islam. So there needs a lot of clarity today in a challenging world. And Allah says, kulli. That this deen, this way of life, this political, economic, social, cosmological order, so for it to prevail. And Allah says that He Himself is a witness to this fact that Islam will be indeed triumphant over every other ideology. Not long ago, in, if you remember Herbert W. Armstrong, uh, the one who was the editor of the Plain Truth magazine, beautiful articles used to surface. And in one of these articles was the topic the crucial half century pertaining to Islam's development. And there you find that Islam's growth rate was 257%. This is just one of the projections. So generally Muslims become very lethargic and when they observe the reversion, or some people call it conversion, but actually reversion of an individual, then they get very happy and they say, you see, there is truth in the use of the kulli. But mind you, whilst Muslims, remember in Africa we had 60% of Africans who claimed to be following Islam. When we looked at Sudan, which was the breadbasket of Africa, we warned them that basically there is lots of missionary work in Sudan itself. And by the way, this Christian missionary and Zionist intervention right, caused Sudan to be split. And you'd find that as far as Christian missionary endeavor is concerned, they were like topics, uh, Christ before television, meaning in South Sudan, they, brought, they used to take huge projectors and they used to show films of Jesus Christ. Now, if in a household if, which is quite uh, conservative, you find that there can be no absolute control. In other words, the children will go out to play, etc. And people love novelties. You know, remember when uh, these large screens came out, even LEDs and so on. So people love technology, technology and things which are of novelty. So you'd find that when this occurred, people used to rush out and in this way, they managed to do a lot of, in this sense, conversions, not conversions. So you'd find that at this moment in time, we just stand about 60%. We have not managed to gain. Why? Because Muslims become very lethargic. Ah, This would happen when, how, in which area Muslims be dominant or not, it is left to Allah. Really speaking, but you will have to actually do your thing. So whilst we became complacent, 
the West began to, and the claim is that Islam is a religion of peace. But of late, when you observe what actually happens with ISIS, etc., you find that the challenges are great. Today, people don't read as much as they used to be like before. We are living in a fast world. Yes, there's Amazon, you know, and so on, and you can download books, etc. But basically, equally so, the electronic media is even more powerful. You find that people love to look at, look at, uh, at your disposal. You have so many different ch uh, channels. Okay? So you find that all the odds are against us. So that is why the challenge is, what is the relevance of Islam? Basically, this used to be a discourse previously, but this has become eminent today. What is the relevance of Islam? Thus, previously we used to hear, uh, can Islam adapt to a mod modern technological order? Today we claim, we claim Islam is a way of life, and this is not something which is exclusive. Everyone is claiming Hinduism has some phenomenal slogans, etc. We'll look at the websites and they're moving in the way that we are. We, pray, we claim to be praying five times a day. There are some people claiming to pray uh, two times every day, etc. So my point is, whether one likes it or not, even with intelligent students who may have qualified from here, presumably, and other institutions and who have better literature at their disposal, they are asking the question, what is the relevance of Islam today? Yes, we have to talk of Sunnah, Ahadith, and, and all these things, but it is imperative at times for us to go back to theory. <coughs> theory that can actually motivate a certain degree of action in our lives and our perspective so that we'll be able to basically, at least on an academic level, project Islam. So you'd find uh, Professor S. Z. Hassan, the teacher of Professor Fazl Rahman al-Ansari, he says on the claim that Islam is a way of life, he said life is very much about living, to walk, to talk, to interact, these are its manifestations. And when this particular issue comes about, then the obvious question that surfaces is, what I ought to do and what I ought to become. Because when really speaking, the intelligent people, they are above, you know, sunnah, etc. No, they want results. I mean, when children come to the school I and mean, you pay your fees, of course you expect results. So the entire South African community wants from the Department of Education results. So in the same manner, if we claim to be a way of life, are we a reliability? Presumably, because of the media in the control of the West, effectively, it seems as if Muslims and Islam is a liability. We are a danger. There are other factors, and of course, we don't go into tangents as far as that is concerned. So the question, what I ought to do and what I ought to become, is an old question. And our own philosophers have went, have, have uh, dived deep into these issues and have brought about solutions. But really speaking, as far as theory is concerned, there are two claimants. One is revelation and one is philosophy. Philosophy, reason. Now remember, as far as philosophy, reasoning is concerned, the science that is in this vein can be classified as metaphysics or ontology. You follow? And here you find that the old uh, philosophers have dived deep into the question and through strenuous studies and lots of years of research, they have basically theoretically brought about system upon system upon system and basically you will see where we come at the end of this. So that is why you find, and of course among these are not any simple uh, Aristotle, Pluto, Hegel, etc. And basically to mention one is Kant, in the, le the leading German uh, philosopher of late, when I say of late, about 100 years ago. So he basically impartially looked at all the discussions of all these philosophers, Plato, even Abdullah ibn Sina, who is called Ab Sina, right? And he found that none of these philosophers 
have managed to target what I ought to do and what I ought to become. So then, of course, so which means that metaphysics or ontology hasn't got... I'm just giving you some theory. Because it is important for us to go into this so that you understand what is the Qur'an, what is the relevance of Islam, what is the relevance of religion, the beast, in our era, in our daily life, etc. Why are you coming here for Jum'ah? Can this hour not be more productively used, etc. So then, uh, if, if metaphysics have failed, then of course you look, you, you'll have to look at uh, revelation. So as far as revelation is concerned, remember religions in particular loosely classified can be divided into two categories eastern eastern and semitic so when you look at semitic religions you look at judaism christianity and islam and we as muslims believe that all three are relevant in terms of chronology, chronological order because we believe in the evolution of religion and religious thought but as far as semitic religions are concerned Remember, there is also a sense of evolution because Krishna is supposed to, Rama is supposed to be the seventh incarnation of God, Krishna the eighth, and Buddha the eighth. So Buddhism is supposed to be the evolution of these three. So let us look at Gautam Buddha. Gautam Buddha, and of course some uh, classical commentators of Quran also says when Quran states what Tini was Zaytun by the olive and the fig, perhaps there is reference to Gautam Buddha who used to love to sit under the fig tree, etc. Nevertheless, Gautam Buddha was basically a good man and remember that virtue are of two types, positive and negative. So to find Nirvana, perfection, so what did he do? He ran away from society, he went into the jungle, he had a wife, he was married, he had a son. So he ran away from responsibility and there he sat wherever he was and you find that you know uh, he began to evolve, he began to find himself himself like some, uh, some mystics would do in the Islamic sense. But nevertheless when you look at this impartially you would find that as far as classification is concerned in terms of virtue this can be perceived to be negative virtue because whilst he spent all his time there the only effective social the benefit was that he avoided hurting others. But nevertheless, all the time spent there finding himself could be spent helping one organizations to become more robust in terms of reaching out to, ha to help the underprivileged, the widows, etc. So basically that can be perceived to be negative virtue. But whilst I'm saying that these things, get the hint as well. By the way, many people will say that films, and t uh, films are not allowed, etc. But somebody just mentioned yesterday and he gave me commentary for about two hours about uh, Shah uh, Amir Khan's new film. You heard about it? No, you should go and watch it. it I think it is banned in, in many uh, cinemas, even here, but I think in Rosebank it shows. So it actually smacks at uh, the monopolization of religion and in a very subtle manner it targets Hinduism etc but even when we look at others and we look and we laugh at others in some way we should also laugh at ourselves because very often Muslims and the manifestation of Islam reflects a little bit of Christianity a little bit of Buddhism etc so we also need to be very very uh, critical of ourselves as far as that is concerned so when you look at Semitic religions, let us look at uh, Musa salam, because Musa salam was indeed a prophet who received uh, uh, communication of Almighty Allah and basically guidance. But whilst he was a leader of hordes in battle etc, Musa salam, of course he didn't bring any definite laws as to how one should live in a marriage environment etc. So invariably you, you, you need something more and of course people say that Islam and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I'm cutting it short because of time 
But nevertheless, when you look at the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you have to look at him in view of these challenges. What I ought to do and what I ought to become. Yes, mashallah, you get up in the morning, the first thing you do is to wash your hands. Yes, your hands have been gallivanting the whole day, so there is a little bit of science as far as that is concerned. And then of course, you use the miswak, etc. But then on the other end, there is a bit of science as far as that is concerned. But as soon as you step out of the house, the relevance is what I ought to do and what I ought to become. Like even now, people are saying, ah, why should we basically go all the way? Why should the South African government go all the way supporting Palestine? Because basically you find that as far as economics are concerned, the Zionists or whatever you call them here, right, they also impact greatly in terms of the economic uh, wheel as far as that is concerned. So in other words, we have to re-analyze uh, our position in this country, how do we impact in a global way, etc. And to cut a long story short, as far as the relevance of Islam is concerned, like even here in South Africa, when you look at the tripartite alliance, and of course these unions, and you know, COSATU, etc., and how uh, the Communist Party also involves themselves in policies in this country as far as economics is concerned. Remember, communism, in theory, stands for the emancipation of the masses. In theory, but practically it places power in the hands of a few. And again, Islam, that is why we need to understand the principles of Islam. Islam stands for, one of the major principles of Islam is whatever benefits the minority at the expense of the vast majority is disallowed in Islam. Latest stats tell you that the 1% that has a strong hold on the global economy today, they control more than the 99%. You heard of this? It, it is common knowledge in, in, in normal news, not, you know, uh, special bullet uh, uh, magazines that you need to buy. So in other words, when you look at the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in conclusion, I can only give you this one example. We have to take the Prophet out of the experimentation, meaning we, do, we look, very often we say, ah, he's very intelligent, you know, he has a degree in BSc, etc. So we call water H2O. Water H2O, hydrogen and two oxygen molecules. But, but when, when, when you are actually thirsty or when you want, wish to actually cleanse yourself, then you won't call for H2O. You will call for water. You will call for, you know, tea, etc. to lubricate yourself, etc. So in the like manner, when you look at what I ought to do and what I ought to become, then of course you will have to look at Muhammad Rasulullah exactly like that H, like water and not H2O. Meaning there should be relevance of the seerah. There should be relevance of the prophetic way. And once we Muslims go back to that, inshallah we will be able to smash the entire world, not just theoretically, but basically, we will reach the point of the use of the Lord.